The Pacific Gooey Duck, this large saltwater clam, is found in coastal British Columbia. Over the last 40 years, they've gone from an oddity used for crab bait to one of the most valued seafoods in the world. Once used to make chowder on BC ferries, this king of the clams is now found in high-end restaurants all over Asia. But still, it's virtually unheard of in Canada. Rob and I are going to do what we can to change that. I'm Robert Clark. As a chef, I have spent my entire career in the pursuit of sustainable seafood. I'm Carmen ruiz Laza. As a consumer, I've made sourcing local Canadian seafood my mission. Rob and I are going to take you on a journey. We're going to meet the men and women that bring the sea to our tables. Dig in, dig in, let's go. I might not know a lot about gooey duck, but I know where you go to find clams, the beach. Unfortunately for Carmen, most gooey duck live a little bit deeper than the shoreline. Do you think we're gonna find a gooey duck out we're here? We're not gonna find a gooey duck here. Now, a gooey duck shell is that huge. Yeah. And I have to confess, it's rather a silly looking clam. And their look is one of the obstacles that we need to overcome to convince more Canadians to actually give it a try. Like most of it's export at the moment. It's so important for us to keep more at home. I'm looking forward to it because I, I want to get over the giggles with this clam, right? Is that a gooey duck? No. <laughs> There's one, Carmen! <laughs> <laughs> to find ourselves some gooey duck, we're going to have to take a little trip to Qualicum Beach on Vancouver Island. Evan Scoffings is a first-generation gooey duck diver, but his wife Annie's father was one of the original license holders. Evan invited Carmen and I to his house in Qualicum Beach so she could try gooey duck with his family. Oh my God, it's a, such a pleasure to meet you in person. Nice to meet you, Robert. Yeah. Finally. Carmen, nice to see you. Nice oh. I'm Annie. Carmen, nice, nice to see you. you. I'm not going to pay attention you. to Evan at all now. Oh my nice God. Nice to see you, Carmen. Levi, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Robert. Yep. So when you're down there, and what are you looking for in order to find your gooey duck? So we call them gooey duck shows. So that's the siphon. So that's the only little bit you see sticking out of the oh, sand. Oh wow. Really? It has two holes in it. So when I cut it, you'll see it's sort of almost like a figure eight, right? The, mm -hmm. So there's two, si two holes to the siphon, an in and an out. So it sucks water in, goes through the guts, spits out the And so it's it, this whole body is hidden? So it's like this, basically, and this would be the sand, right? Oh my goodness. And this would probably stretch, if this stayed a little longer, like it would really stretch out, right? So this guy's probably down, well, I mean, I don't know, he's probably down that far. This really stretches out. So as if any predators come along, their only natural reaction is just to do that into the sand. So, you know, you see this little show in the sand and, and yeah, if you touch it, it'll react and then you, then you try and work that stinger, the, the, we call a stinger, the high pressure water line, down around them without actually hitting the clam. You want to liquefy the sand around it and pull it out as gently as possible, but also do it because you want to get as many as you can while you're down there. So, how long have you been diving? Uh, I've been fishing, diving for, I think this is my 16th year. So, someone watching, let's say, what does it take to be a gooey duck fisherman? From beginning to your table, what is the process? Uh, you have to have a certain level of experience of just being a sport diver, just to be comfortable with actually being a, a diver. I'm able to dive on a hose with a compressor from the boat to about 110 feet and work. Then you actually need a job. You need somebody that has a place for you, which is like probably the hardest part. Generally, as I said, you sort of have to get in at the bottom, be a bit of a deckhand, do that stuff first, learn the job and sort of see how it all works. And then you can sort of evolve into the, the diver position if it works for you. What do you want to see with this product in Canada? In order to get a hold of it, like, I mean, just maybe reserving a little more for the local market, um, I, I think you, you said it has, kind of has to come from us. We have to have a want for it. It's just something that hasn't been on our radar. All right, so this is how you would prepare it at home? Yeah, yes. I, mean, I prefer it thin. You know, it's any way you like it, right? Some like it thicker, some like it thinner. So I'm, I'm the official taster. I have to taste it before it makes sure it's good enough Certainly. to give to Carmen. Yeah. The thin, thin's good for it. Mm. It's sweet and salty at the same time. Like I can feel the sea water just bursting 
from the flesh. This tastes like, um, well, it's the ocean. I'm tasting the ocean. Yeah. Of course, I've had but, this But the flavor sweetness, before. like it's, you know, like oysters are briny. Mm -hmm. Where this is, is sweet. Like it's a sweet finish. Are you going to have some? As for Evan's daughter, Joey, she's not quite sold on gooey duck yet. Even when I started using it in my restaurants, I had to develop a few tricks to get people to try it. Now I'm going to show you a trick I used to do. Okay. So this, I'd cut it like this, this part of it, and incorporate this in a dish. And it would just be like a clam, whatever. People would think this is a mushroom. And they go, oh, this is so good. It does look like a mushroom. Like a mushroom. Yes, I've never had gooey duck. Yes, you have. Evan's favorite way to serve gooey duck is in a ceviche. Give them a stir in there and there's a lot of lemon lime juice in there. So, you know, we just want to let that, the gooey duck and the... I can stir. That's one thing I know how to do. You need your own cooking show. This is like... <laughs> okay. Are you so hungry? Well, come on. Mosey yeah, on up. Mmm. That is good. Tomorrow, we're going to be heading out on the water to meet up with Evan and his crew. But for now, I'm happy to have finally tasted some gooey duck. Evan has to get up at the break of dawn. He is a buyer who needs a certain amount of gooey duck today, so he needs to get started early. Rob and I, on the other hand, decided to catch a later boat with former gooey duck diver, Jamie Austin. Jamie was a diver for nearly 40 years. He's now the president of the Underwater Harvesters Association and knows just about everything there is to know about this clam. Well, I started diving for uh, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, and gooey ducks in the 1980, 81, and at the time, I didn't even know what a gooey duck was. How did the fishery start? Like, how, who was the first one to go, oh, look at this gooey duck? They were found in Washington State intertidally. There's a, a bar in, outside Bryn in Washington and, uh, that is called the Gooey Duck Tavern. And it's got, you know, it was the first place, and legend has it, the first place they brought gooey ducks up on the beach. In the early days, we didn't make any money, and it was the price per pound was really low. And there was a one crab fisherman out of Ladysmith that we were harvesting some quality out of Ladysmith Harbor in the early days, and it, and it wasn't very good. And we were trading gooey duck for crab. Yeah, and he was using it for bait in his crab traps. When gooey duck was worth pennies to the pound, things were a lot more dangerous. All our boats used to be old wooden trollers or something that n nobody really wanted anymore and someone could buy them cheap and you would turn them into a dive boat. The, the airlines are better, they're floating. We used to have these cheap airlines that if you got too far out, you used to, it used to kink off and you would have no air. We had a boat once that sank when the diver was underwater and he saw the boat, he came back to the boat and it was underwater. All that changed when the industry moved from a derby fishery to a quarry. Rather than being limited by time, each gooey duck license is now limited wow. by a maximum number of pounds they can harvest in a year. This is referred to as their quota. It changed the business completely. We had, didn't have to work if it was a blowing a gale for us because you had a quota that wasn't going away. You'd do it tomorrow when the weather was better. So people didn't go out and risk their lives. You know, just looks like quite a strong animal, right? For a diver, monitoring your depth and the amount of time you spend underwater is critical for your safety. The deeper you go, the less time you can safely stay under. Before the industry moved to a quota, divers would constantly push their bodies to the limit to try to harvest as many gooey duck as they could in the short, allocated window. Many divers paid the price for that. We had a number of times where you get skin bends and, or you, you can get actual bends and you know that's serious stuff. The, the bends is, uh, is excess nitrogen in your system and you're coming up to the surface with too much nitrogen your body has the, doesn't have the ability to off-gas the nitrogen fast enough and nitrogen will uh, locate in your joints generally that's why it's called the bends. You're, you can't bend a joint and as you're coming up of course with pressure the, the, the bubble will expand in your joints and it's very painful. Jamie himself suffered more than one serious accident. I had decompression sickness and I lost my balance for a year. I was in the chamber in Vancouver twice and so I was bent fairly badly and they, the bubbles that, just, that located in my system ended, ended up in my brain. So uh, they did dissipate with the chamber treatments but yeah, it, it, it was, it was a, a bit of a warning. 
because they're they're quite firm and and sharp. Yeah, and sharp. And so why do you keep these? They count the rings and then they can determine the age of the product. And when they age, that they cut the shell in half and then they can do the side version of that and look at the side rings. And the hinge is something that holds the shell together. This is not the same two pieces, but they, they would be like this in the wild and this is all covered with uh, belly meat and then of course then the siphon comes out here. Yeah, it's the crew just kind of doing laps around you, Mike, there. They're just going to come along the port side here so you're nice and clear there. We wanted to make sure we were harvesting sustainably and we were harvesting in within the guidelines of conservation and uh, so that's why we've adopted this very low extraction rate of, of less than 2% and uh, to ensure that the fisheries around for you know long, long time. As much as the industry has grown, Jamie would like to see more gooey ducks being sold in Canada. We've got a, lots of divers that are in their 20s and 30s, and it's a good job. And I mean, you look, I go to lots of these fisheries meetings, and a lot of the fishermen are, are old. <laughs> I mean, we have some people in our business that are third generation, and their grandfather was in the diver, their father's a diver, and now the son is a diver, and the sons are just in their 20s. So that's three generations that are still in the fishing business. And, and so if you don't have young people, who's going to catch the fish? Evan and his crew are young and busy. I hope they'll let Rob and I get our hands on some fresh gooey duck. Good morning. By the time we arrived, Evan was suited up and ready to go. There's Evan, dressed for action. Is it hot, Evan? Yeah. Is it hot in there? Oh, it's pretty warm already. I'm claustrophobic just looking at that suit. Yeah. You know, I remember getting Patty certified to go diving, but Carmen. this is freaking me out. This is not at all what I did. <laughs> and can you imagine? That's your lifeline. Gooey Duck boats have three crew, two divers and a tender. The divers take turns underwater. Each shift lasts for two to three hours. It's the tender's job to haul the harvested gooey duck aboard, crate them, pack them, ready for transport. So Jamie, tell us what's going on here. What, what, what are we looking at? So they're coming back with a full bag and they're gonna, they have underwater communications so that the microphone is probably inside the wheelhouse and they all set up bringing a bag, a bag back and then that's what happens. They pick, there's two bags, right? Yep. Empty, full, drop off the full one. The now diver is off filling off the empty bag, filling out the empty one. And in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, they'll come back and drop that off again. They're fishing to the market. That's what the boat quota system has done. They're fishing to a, a, an order already. So it's not really how much they're going to stay in the water. It's the, the two divers will divide up the pounds and say, I'm going to do, you know, 10 cages each or something. And a cage is 52 pounds. Paisley is Evan's tender. She's young, but it's obvious she's a dynamo. This is my second year out. Um, I was working in the Queen Charlotte last year, so this is my first time working up in the Gulf. Uh, and I'm 23 this year, so I am one of the youngest. It's just kind of important to make sure you always know where your diver is. You can see uh, their airline is clear and there's no debris or anything in the way that's going to catch on it. They have a comm box, so they're always uh, able to communicate with one another and uh, kind of let us know where they are if they're bagging off the gooey ducks so we can have the bag up in time. And, and they alert you incoming and then you just... So tell us about... Just giving me the alert. Oh, so now <laughs> it's happening! It's happening! <laughs> and let's watch the girl in action. Oh my god! That's a lot of clams. But look how much care and yeah. respect doing every step that they're doing right now is to maintain the quality. I've learned so much being out here and working on the water is just like it's really life-changing because you can work with so many new people and there's it's just a really changing environment all the time. We have new places that we're always looking at and diving in so it's it's really neat but that's your future yes it's to go be a diver yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> that that's conviction there's yeah. your answer oh yeah <laughs> while evan is harvesting underwater his second diver mike is up top keeping an eye on things oh my god what oh my god. look at that wow oh, look at the color Holy look how beautiful beautiful we're gonna get showered yeah 
my real see. <laughs> there it is. Woo! Look at all this. Holy cow. This one's a bit younger. Shell's very thin. Has some years on them. So what do you see when you're diving? When I see sometimes nothing, uh, we'll take a cannonball, drop it, and we'll see an indent, a divot. When we drop the cannonball, when we stimulate it, the gooey duck sinks down, and then we see Oh, the then you see a divot. Yes. Oh. We take our, uh, our stinger, our water hose, dig around it to break the seal, and then the gooey duck will pop up. Oh my God, look at the size of this guy. My job's always been taking the rubber bands off the gooey duck. <laughs> Here, Mike, show us how to do it. Up north, this becomes the sport. How fast can you do it? Oh, oh. my God. That... I get motion sickness. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> I was so impressed with Paisley, I decided the least I could do was give her a hand. So, of course, your thing is to get these out of the sun as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I can see you're working fast, fast. It's like a puzzle. My experience with diving is limited, but I know that it's hard work. Evan's been down for a bit over an hour, and he's filled his order for the day. Evan must be exhausted. I have to say, we're so impressed. I mean, you look happy. Oh, this is as good as it gets, really. You know, we're out here, this beautiful weather, close to home, lots of friends, so. Seeing what you do, and like for me, I mean, I've, I've had the opportunity to, uh, to like touch, taste, cook with gooey duck over over 20, 25 years, but to see it that fresh come up, like that is joyous, this little bag of shining delight. Well, that's like how we incredible. see it. So really nice to have that and share that experience. Now that Evan is done for the day, it's time to head to land and have our catch processed and accounted for. So right now what we're doing is validating the, the gooey duck. So, I mean, on the boat, as they're harvesting it, they're keeping a track of, of how much they're getting. And then when it comes on, on shore, they have to pay a third party validator to, um, to just guarantee that the weights are, are right because they have a quota system. So basically they're subtracting, they're minusing what they got today from their total allowable catch or their, or their quota. And they'll keep track of that until it, until it gets to zero. And that's just another one of the tools that they use to ensure that the fishery is well managed, which helps with the sustainability efforts. Brought to you in part by Ocean Regenerative Aquaculture and CKR Seaweed. Your Nation's Table is brought to you in part by Mission Hill Family Estate Winery. Back in Qualicum Beach, we've decided to host a gooey duck feast for local divers and their families. To help me out, I've invited my old friend, Chef Bobby Milheron. He's the executive chef of several Vancouver restaurants and one of the few Western chefs that serves gooey duck on his menu. This is how one would buy them. They'd be in a tank, and some tanks will be lying down. Some tanks, they have little, little uh, dividers, so the gooey duck is actually presented like this. If you look here, the skin oh, is already. just going to, you're going to be able to peel it right off, and that's what you're looking for. OK, I'm going to be between the dueling knives here. I'm going to just watch. <laughs> so take a look at that. Wow. So, this, so, that's, so these are on the inside. So but if, you, if, you, if you've got the courage to, to go and get yourself a gooey duck, your, your fishmonger would do this for you. Like there's two very different textures and... and Ab absolutely. Oh. So the, the, the body meat comparative to the, the siphon, so, so right around here, this is the, the body meat and it's going to be quite a bit softer. Mm. So cooking this one is a lot easier than, than, than the siphon. And, and look how thin it is, you can see light through it. That's a very good slice. The goal is to, I still want to see my knife. So when it's, when it's raw like this, you really want to go as thin as possible, um, just because it could become quite, quite chewy. The key is the quality and the taste of, of the gooey duck. It's so, so special. You really don't want to do a lot to it. The guests are starting to arrive. Which means Bobby and I have a lot of work to do. So we're just going to create some salads. We got, uh, Bobby's made some wonderful uh, clam, like a clamato juice out of, uh, out of the bodies of, uh, of the clams, of the gooey ducks. Calling it a Canadian Caesar based on the, the Caesar the drink opposed to Caesar the salad. And then with the seaweed one on it, that is a ceviche or a crudo 
often. And then uh, the, the heated dish, the saffron cream sauce, is from the meat that's around the, the shell. So it's just going to be a plain. We're just going to build little things to, to pass to the guests that come this evening. So, yeah. But to make it truly BC, we're going to add some, uh, some seaweed. When we get it from uh, Oceans Regenerative, which is a, a company that's working towards sustainable seaweed production here in British Columbia. So now we have three very different dishes, like one just so very neutral, one acidic, and one very creamy. I better hurry up. I hear our guests arriving. That can't be good. <laughs> Are we ready, chef? What you're going to be enjoying the, this evening, because there's a dish with acid and a dish with cream, what's going to be perfect with this is the Mission Hill Reserve Rosé. It's a beautiful evening. Rob, I have to say that when we first talked about gooey duck, and I had Googled it and looked at the photos and I first saw this very interesting looking clam. I thought, mm, I may not like that, but wow. Is it ever good, right? Wow. I, that's why I wanted the opportunity to taste it because it's just so sweet. It's very odd, but very cool. And look, no eek factor holding it. You know me, I'm You've pretty You've come a long squishy. way in a few days. <laughs>